I have my note of where my map. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Savannah. Okay, so if you have a yoga mat, you can get that set out. Otherwise, you can practice on carpeting. If you're on a harder surface, you can always lay down a blanket. Um, I just grabbed some cushions off my sofa. So if you have a couple pillows, even off your bed that you wanna grab, these will be nice towards the end of class. Maybe a smaller pillow if you want something to support the back of your head. I have a little throw blanket here as well. So if you have something um, that is workable, go ahead and grab that. Water bottle, I, you're not drinking water, so you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> Unless you are, then have something, a little sip of water, you might need it. Um, I have a little scarf here. So if you have an eye covering, a washcloth, or just something gentle to put over the eyes at the end of class, that can really help the body relax. It can help reduce headaches. Tissues, so some of our yoga breathing techniques will practice pranayama and poses do help stimulate um, our sinuses in a good way so they can help clear and open our sinuses. So it's always nice to have a tissue handy. The other thing that we can use, this will be again at the end of our practice is either a larger book. If you have a yoga block, that's fine. You don't need one, but just something that has a little bit of weight to it. So we'll practice some abdominal breathing at the end. That's very relaxing and it's nice to have a little bit of weight on our belly. And then I just have another extra little cushion here um, beside me. We will start in a seated position. You are welcome to be seated in a chair on the edge of a bed or a sofa, if that works best for you. I'm going to take my meditation cushion behind me. In addition to that, my folded blanket on top. I personally need a little extra lift because I do have a lot of tightness in my hips and low back. So if you give yourself a little prop underneath the sit bones, it can be easier for us to sit on the floor. So I'll give us all a moment here to um, get comfortable. And idea. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, you guys look great and ready to go. So take any comfortable seated position. Easy cross in our yoga practice is called Sukhasan. So you can just cross at the ankles or position the legs comfortably. Loosen up the clothing. We want a nice loose waistband so our belly is relaxed here. We'll take chin mudra in our hands. So we bring the index and thumb to touch and extend the other three fingers. This means feel of wisdom and knowledge. And either placing the palms down on our knees, this has a more grounding effect. So if we have had a busy day, uh, mind's kind of racing around, or maybe we feel a little low energy from our fasting, palms up tends to be a little bit more energizing. So play with that position in the hands, but whatever feels most comfortable for you. Draw the shoulders down, let them relax. Let the head just float on the shoulders here. If you need to readjust the sit bones of the legs, do so. And then we'll soften our gaze. So just let the eyelids become heavy. Start to gently close the eyes. Once the eyes are closed, if you need to readjust your seat, please do so. And we'll start our practice tonight with just some centering and some observations of our body, our breath, and our mind. So let's start by relaxing the muscles across the face. Allow those hardworking eyes to relax. If you tend to clench your jaw or hold tightness around the jaw, go ahead and poof the cheeks up with air. Swallow a couple times, whatever you need to do to help the mouth, tongue, and jaw to relax. Feel the ears floating over the shoulders. And feel the weight of the shoulders, the elbows, and the hands resting on the knees. Simultaneously feel length and lifting up through the spinal column to the crown of the head so that we're sitting up nice and tall. 
Feel the contact points of the sit bones with your props to the floor below. Soften and relax around the hip creases and all the way down the legs, through the knees, into the ankles, feet, and toes. And as we're taking this moment to reconnect to our body, if we do come across any areas that maybe we're healing or taking care of tonight, let's pause on those areas and allow them to relax. Remembering that we're all here for different reasons and we each have permission to modify and adjust our practice accordingly. So trying to maintain the seated posture as best as possible, we'll begin to observe the natural rhythm of our breath. So simply watch the body breathe in and watch the body breathe out. We'll do our best to breathe evenly and smoothly in and out through the nose. If you do have some congestion or sinuses going on, blow your nose as needed or take different breaths as needed. Now notice the inhalation. So as we breathe in, we should feel a natural expansion. Maybe we feel the chest rise a little bit an expansion around the rib cage. And on the exhale, we should feel a natural contraction and release. Every inhale is an opportunity to breathe in fresh air, prana, and energy. And every exhale, an opportunity to cleanse away stale old air and energy. Breathe at a rhythm that is comfortable for you and your body. And we're gonna take this breath more deeply into what we call yogic pranayama, our diaphragmic breathing. So we'll start to concentrate more on the navel center and the abdomen. If it helps us concentrate, place one or even both of your hands on top of your belly at this point. Continue to breathe in and out through the nose as best as you can. On the inhale, we'll want to relax the belly and just let it expand like a balloon. On our exhale, we will gently contract the belly, drawing the navel towards the spine. On the inhale, we relax the abdominal muscles. We let the belly get big and expand. And on the exhale, gentle contraction, drawing the navel back in towards the body. Keep going at your rhythm. So when we inhale and expand, it allows our diaphragm to drop down, which pulls our breath into the deeper lobes of the lungs. And when we exhale and we contract, it helps push our diaphragm up, helping to push that old air out of the lungs. The whole time, sit up as tall as possible and let everything be as relaxed as possible. And we'll all cycle through one more round of complete breath. So that'll be another full breath in to fill ourselves up and a full breath out. That exhale is just as important, so take your time. Whenever we get to the bottom of that next exhale, we will let go of trying to follow and control our breath for a moment. So just let the breath wander away wherever it wants to go. And then we'll start to wake our body back up here a little bit. So can give your toes a little wiggle down there and then just gently start to flutter the eyelids back open bringing our awareness back to our room and our surroundings so 
So from here, we're gonna take a break from our seated position just for a moment. We will come back to a seat, but notice which foot is in front and then go ahead and stretch both legs out here for a moment. So just give them a stretch. You can straighten one leg at a time. You can flex and point your feet, even taking our hands and just kind of massaging up and down those legs to get the blood flowing and the circulation back down to our legs. I know it can be challenging to sit on the floor, especially if we're not used to doing that so much. And we'll come back to a seated position for just a couple poses here to start warming our body. But this time, try to place the opposite foot in front. Sit up nice and tall, find those sit bones. From here, float your fingertips off to the side of the body and then turn the palms up to the ceiling. Let's take another big breath in and this time we're gonna reach those arms all the way up to the ceiling. Turn your palms out and exhale, float those fingertips all the way back down to the ground. We'll keep going, just a centering breath here. So on the inhale, reach up, this time, gently float your chin up and look up to the ceiling. On the exhale, fingertips down, drop your chin to your chest and take your drishti to your belly button. Let's do one more centering breath. Inhale, both arms up, chin up and look up, see how far you can see. Exhale, fingertips down, chin down and gaze down to stretch out the root of the neck. Again, inhale, arms up. This time we're gonna go into a seated twist. Keep it gentle. So on your exhale, rotate and twist to your right. Let those fingertips float down. You might find your opposite knee. We'll keep twisting through the shoulders, the neck and the head. And I want us to open our eyes really wide and see how far we can see behind us. Inhale, bring those arms and the body back up to center. And then exhale, we'll twist to our left. Let the fingertips slow down. If you find the opposite knee, that's fine. Continue this gentle twist through the neck. Open the eyes nice and wide, peek behind you. Again, inhale, arms up. Big stretch, keep this length. Exhale, twist back to the right. So twists are great for our digestive system. So the digestive system slows down a little bit. The twisting will help keep it nice and active. Inhale, reach those arms up. And then one more time, let's twist to our left, ring everything out. And twisting is also really nice for cleansing of the digestive system. And then inhale, we'll meet back in center. Bring those palms to touch. On the exhale, lower your hands in front of the heart. We'll interweave all 10 fingers here and press our palms forward, again, following the breath. On the inhale, float the head of the arm bones up beside the ears. Now on the exhale, draw the belly in and purposely round, especially the upper back. We hold a lot of tension there, so we're gonna start stretching out those muscles. Inhale, arms up, lift up gently through the chest, gently arch your low back. Exhale, pull the belly in, pretend like you're rounding over a beach ball. Seated cat cow. Let's do one more round. So we'll inhale to reach up. Big stretch and exhale. Round through that back, letting go of tension between the shoulder blades. And then one more inhale, lift those arms up. This time open the hands up and exhale, let it go. Take a moment, just kind of roll your shoulders out. You wanna drop one ear at a time over to your shoulders. You can even stretch those legs back out from our seated position because we're gonna move our whole body now. So we'll transition to tabletop pose at this time. You'll need to rearrange yourself accordingly in your space. So if you do you need extra cushion for the knees, take your blanket that you have and place it underneath the knees or the shin bones. And we'll clear our space here for our tabletop. So we're gonna turn our bodies into a tabletop. Spread those fingers nice and wide and place those hands right underneath the shoulders. Have your knees drop right below the hips and you'll have a few inches between your knees and your feet here. And we'll start in a neutral position. So my back is the tabletop, my head's floating in line with the spine. Again, with the breath. So on the inhale, relax the belly down. 
and lift up through the crown of the head and the tailbone. We can roll our eyes up to that third eye center. On the exhale, pull in through the belly, scoop the tailbone under, look to the belly button. Again, to stretch the back. Follow your breath. Inhaling, swaying that low back. Do some gentle extension and exhale, rounding to stretch the muscles of the back. So I want you to keep going. We should feel some movement here in the pelvis. So we're doing some anterior and posterior pelvic tilts. You should feel movement all the way up and down the spine. So really great pose to do after a full day of work. If we were sitting in an office, really important to loosen the spine back up and use that breath. Let's take one more of each. If it feels nice, add a little side movement, maybe a little bit more movement in the neck and shoulders, whatever feels good for you and your body. And then let's come back to a neutral position and we're gonna give our legs a stretch. So equal weight in the hands. Do you draw the low belly in slightly to support that back? and stretch your right foot straight back behind you. Now the foot is on the floor, so we should have the ball of the foot touching the floor here. Toes are tucked under, and then shift your weight back as much as you want. So it's as if we're trying to press the heel towards the floor, even though it won't touch. And we should feel a nice stretch up the Achilles, the calf, behind the knee. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, we'll bring our right knee down. Give the left leg a stretch. So take that left foot back behind you, toes tucked under. Feel free to shift your weight back through that leg as much as you want to intensify the stretch. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, bring it down. Let's give our wrist a break here. Let's stretch out our hips and back a little bit more in our first child's pose or balasana. So we'll touch the toes together and open your knees nice and wide wider than your hips. So your knees are gonna be almost as wide as your yoga mat if you're on one. And then we'll try to drop the hips down to the heels. Now, if your hips do not easily touch the heels, don't worry. Feel free to take pillows or blankets behind you to prop up the hips a little bit. If they do touch down to the heels, that's great. You can continue to let them sink. So if we want more stretching for the shoulders, continue to reach your fingertips forward melt the heart and relax the head down to the ground. Now it is important that our head is supported. So if the head does not easily touch the ground, slide your fist or forearms under the forehead or use a prop. So child's pose helps reduce headaches, fatigue and insomnia. It helps alleviate stress and anxiety. It's a really nice grounding pose to do, especially as we move into the evening. So really let the body just sink towards the ground here. We should feel that stretch across the low back and around the hips. And let's all take one more full deep breath in Balasana. And then we'll bring ourselves right back up. Now that we gave our wrists a break and arms from our balancing, we will come back to tabletop for one more pose before we move on. So stack those joints, knees under hips, hands under shoulders. This is gonna be a little bit of balance, a little strengthening, but I'll show you modifications. Re-extend the right foot back from the hip, and then we're gonna activate the back of the leg, and we'll try to hover our right leg parallel to the floor. The toes should point straight down to the ground. If that feels a little much tonight, just keep your toes down, no big deal. Otherwise, we'll hover the right leg up. If we want more, the left arm reaches forward from the shoulder. So you're doing right leg, left arm, opposite. And you should probably feel a little weeble wobbly here because this is a balancing pose. Make sure we're breathing in and out through the nose for three, two, and one. Go ahead and release, it's spinal integration. Balance the hips a little back, pull the low belly in, stretch the left leg back. So we'll do the same thing on the other side here. 
So you're going to start squeezing the muscles of the back of the leg and low back and hover the left leg parallel to the floor. Try to keep that low back nice and flat. And then right arm may extend from the shoulder. Remember to modify, simply bring your toes down or don't lift the arm. If you want both, you'll definitely feel a little bit more. This tones and strengthens the core. Our balance takes some concentration. Keep breathing and holding for three, two, and one. Go ahead and release. Now from here, I'm gonna give you a couple options. You can continue to single leg stretch, right leg and left leg, or if you'd like to try to go into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, we'll see how that feels for us tonight. If you'd like to try to go upside down, Walk your hands about one hand distance forward. So you'll see my arms are at a little bit more of an angle. Tuck the toes under. Pull that low belly in and you'll press into the ground to hover the knees, lifting the hips up. And then we shift our weight back and down the legs. Now, if you come up here and like I said, you get lightheaded, dizzy, just come back down. Always an option to sit back in child's pose, no problem. Those of us upside down and downward facing dog, another great opportunity to stretch out the leg. So feel free to take your dog for a walk and pedal your heels. So you're dropping one heel down, bending the opposite knee, and then switching heel to heel. And you can come up and then you can come back down as you need. So this is an inversion, our head is below our heart. This is quite great for some people. It can help prevent headaches because it's getting the blood flow to move towards the brain. It can definitely wake up some sinus stuff too. If it's a little too much pressure, then back off a little bit. So those of us still upside down and down dog, just pause, take one more breath. If we're taking a break, I'll just be one more breath and we'll all reconvene. So one more full breath. Now we are gonna move into a standing pose tonight. It's always fun to do some balancing poses, especially with the little ones. So however you wanna get there, we'll move into a forward fold. So you can walk your hands to your feet, feet to your hands. You can bring yourself to standing and come back down. I'm gonna show you some modifications. If you'd like to modify and you've had enough being upside down, just bend your knees and place your elbows on your thighs so you're more in a squat position but your head is now in line with the heart. If you like this and you wanna keep going upside down, Uttanasana is forward fold. So it doesn't matter if you touch the floor or not, but you're still stretching out the back of the leg. You can kind of dangle your arms and your head to help get rid of stress and tension in that area of the body. We'll just take one more breath here. We won't stay upside down too much longer. Sometimes called ragdoll pose. You can grab up as the elbows as well. Now let's all bend our knees a little bit. Place your hands on top of your thighs with the fingertips turned in. And it's gonna be important to inhale to come up. So tuck your chin and inhale, roll up the spine. Use your strong legs, use your core. Make sure you're trying to inhale as you come up. So if you have been fasting already, not surprising to go lightheaded when you come up to standing. If you get really lightheaded, please just sit right back down to the ground, okay? So if we found our way to standing here, let's place our feet hips width apart to the and I know I get a little cut off here in my camera, so we won't we'll be here for uh, too long. But if you need to reposition yourself in your space, do so. So this pose is called Tadasan. Just float your arms off the side of the body. Feel like you're standing as tall as possible. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips over heels. So we'll go into a little balancing with the breath into palm tree pose. Turn those palms out, take a big breath in and reach your arms out and all the way back up to the ceiling. Bring your palms to touch and exhale hands to heart. Good job, you got it. Now here comes the challenging part. We'll do that again. Inhale, draw a nice big circle through the fingertips. This time, try to lift your heels up. I'm gonna disappear a little bit here. So we're balancing. And then when you exhale, lower your heels and your hands to your heart. Awesome, palm tree pose. Let's try it again, inhale. Reach up, tippy toes, heels. 
Going a couple inches taller. Exhale, lower down. Let's try one more round, palm tree pose. This is a really nice way to stretch everything out. Again, we might've been doing a lot of sitting throughout our day. Exhale. All right, so we'll try one more standing pose today. This will be a single leg balance. So this time bring the insides of the feet and legs to touch. This pose is called Rikshasana or tree pose. So again, drawn slightly through the lower abdominals to gather some strength. Hover the right heel from the floor and then turn your right knee out to the side. So we're actually opening at the hip. Feel free to keep your toes down or place the sole of the foot to the inner ankle or calf. Some people like to reach down for the foot and place it to the inner thigh. Feel free to choose that option as well. And now we're just gonna see what our tree does tonight. Keep the breath flowing as breathing as possible. Good job, if your tree falls over, you got a breeze blowing you around tonight, just bring your tree back. We can add branches to our trees so we can reach those tree branches out. Maybe we wanna create a little breeze and pretend like we're being blown around in the wind. It'll challenge our balance. Awesome, good job. Let's take one more nice deep breath in. We'll meet on an exhale, hands back to heart center. Try to point the knee forward and try to reach the foot forward and then lower it down. Awesome, if you need to rearrange your feet. <laughs> I love kids doing tree pose and bouncing pose, it's the best. They always make sure their tree falls. <laughs> As adults, we always want our tree to stand up right. Take a big breath in. Exhale back to our center. So fix your drishti on one spot. Other side, hover the left heel up. Open the knee out. And ideally, we'll try to place this foot in the same spot we did on our first side. Remember, don't force or strain anything now. Soften the face, keep the gaze nice and steady and the breath flowing. If we wanna add those branches, sometimes that helps with our balance to extend the arms out to the side or up towards the ceiling. Even feel free to add that movement here. Just let your tree kind of flow around in the breeze a little bit. Awesome. Good. Wherever you are, take one more big breath in, in the pose. On the exhale, we'll meet with our hands back to our heart center. Try to point the knee forward and stretch the foot out and then lower it down. Awesome, good job. Relax, let it go, walk it out, wiggle the hips out. Okay, so I'm just gonna have us come back down to seated. We won't go back through um, downward facing dogs. We might need to gather up some props. So if you want your extra cushion to sit on again, go ahead and grab those things. And we're just gonna come right back down to the ground here. So next pose, Baddha Konasana or Bound Angle Pose. This is another pose that can help <clears throat> relax the abdomen and the belly area and also open the hips. So for this one, we'll try to bring the bottoms of the feet together. I'll find my sit bones. It's also important to try to sit up as tall as possible. This pose is challenging for me because I do have a lot of tightness in low back and hips, but I'm gonna really try to lift up through the chest. Feel free to take a hold of the feet or the ankles. Draw the shoulders back and down. The head should always be relaxed, so don't try to strain through the shoulders or the neck. Now, if we have some mobility there, you may begin to hinge forward. Just recognize that the hinge is happening in the hip. So we want to avoid kind of collapsing into this pose. Instead, we try to extend our heart forward. And then we can walk our fingertips forward. Some of you might be able to go pretty far into this pose. And if that's comfortable on your back, feel free to do so. 
forward folds can be very relaxing, help to stress the body, and it helps compress the abdominal wall when you start to go into more of a fold. So again, that can help stimulate your digestion and massage our internal organs. One more breath wherever we happen to be. Those of us that have hinged forward, our next inhalation, just slowly walk yourself back up to a seated position. Sit up nice and tall. Take the hands to the outside of the knees and let's place our feet a little wider than the hips. Bring your weight onto your fingertips behind you and just gently rock your knees, little windshield wiping action. Next, we'll go into a seated twist again to continue to stimulate the digestion and the colon here. So we'll wanna bring the feet together and we wanna still sit up nice and tall on those sit bones. From here, draw your right heel in towards the sit bone and extend your left heel forward. This is called Marichyasana C pose. Take the shin and use it as a little bit of leverage so it helps you sit up really nice and tall. We should already feel a little bit of compression here along the right side of our belly. Take a deep breath in. Now on the exhale, take that left arm and hug the knee or the shin bone. Take your right fingertips behind you. We don't lean back in this pose. We wanna stay seated pretty tall. And you're just gonna breathe into this twist. So we'll gently continue to rotate to our right. And if you hug that knee in, you can use that as a little bit of leverage. I'll let my shoulders, my neck and head. And again, the eyes, if you open them as wide as you can and look to that furthest point behind you, it can be really beneficial for our hardworking eyes. Keep that left foot nice and strong. So if it's just kind of relax out there. Try to pull your left toes back to your shin bone. That's a little bit of an anchor for our body. Let's all take one more breath in. And when you start to exhale, we'll start to unwind. So we'll unwind the head, the shoulders, and the body to face back forward. Once you're facing back forward, cactus your arms out from the shoulders and just take a gentle bow over to your left to counter that twist. It's not a, a big fold, it's just a little bit of a stretch from the back. Good. Inhale, let's bring ourselves back up to seated. We'll switch legs. So you'll step your left heel in, slide your right heel forward. This leg is nice and strong, toes pulling to the shin bone. Use your left shin bone to sit up nice and tall. Draw your shoulders down your back. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, right arm hugs the shin bone, left fingertips prop you up behind you. And then you can continue that twisting action. And just breathe, nice and steady. And we have a little kitty cat that joined us now too. <laughs> so keep twisting, gentle rotation through the shoulders, the neck. Open those eyes nice and wide. Imagine taking a washcloth and wringing everything out. Really great to do twists to cleanse. Remember to keep your right leg nice and strong, especially through the right foot and the toes. Take one more deep breath in. And on our exhale, when you get there, start to unwind. So you'll exhale the head, the shoulders, and the body to face back forward. Cactus the arms from the shoulders and take a gentle bow over to your right to stretch out the back. And then inhale, bring it back up. Awesome. So we're going to transition now all the way onto our backs. So we'll come off of our props if we're seated up on them. Um, if you are going to use things at the end for final relaxation and you want to gather those things up or you need to slide them a little closer to you, you can do that now. 
And then we'll do some nice fast line and a supine position for our body and our mind. So you'll wanna have enough space behind you to lie down. Rock onto either hip, doesn't matter, and walk your hands down. And then we should end up on our back. And once we're on our back, if you do have ponytails, move them out of the way. Adjust your clothing again. And let's go ahead and hug our knees in and massage out that low back. Just rock it out side to side. Take the hands behind the thighs and we're gonna stretch the legs up to the ceiling and another gentle inversion. So this pose is called waterfall pose, a wonderful pose for our circulation. Point and flex the feet a couple of times. Feel free to massage the backs of those thighs. We hold a lot of tightness in our hamstrings behind the knees. This pose is another great pose to help with insomnia, anxiety, and stress. And it redirects our blood flow to our internal organs, our heart, and our head. Hold the outer thighs. And on the inhale, we'll open up into Supta Konasana. So you're opening your legs out into a V shape. Support the outsides of the legs. This will be a stretch for those inner thigh growing muscles. Feel free to roll through your ankles a couple times. If you want more of a stretch, move your hands to the inner thighs and give those muscles a little massage here. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Now bend at the knees and try to reach up for your toes, the inside or even the outsides of the feet for happy baby pose. Wonderful pose to help open up the hips. Your knees are falling to the outside of the armpits. The soles of the feet are facing the ceiling. Feel free to add a little rock here side to side. Keep that breath flowing. Now bring the knees to touch, bring the insides of the feet to touch. So if the feet are parallel, we'll move into a spinal twist. Arms will extend out from the shoulders. And if you exhale, lower the knees to the right. Place a pillow or your folded blanket underneath the bottom thigh if they do not easily touch the ground. Place your right hand on that top thigh to deepen the twist. Relax the left shoulder into the ground and turn the head to the left to counter twist the neck. Even slow the breathing down here. Relax the face, the neck and shoulders. Gravity is assisting us here into our twist. One more full breath, a full breath in, full breath out. The next inhale, we'll bring the head and the knees back to neutral. You might find that we need to shift the low back or realign the hips and the back before we do the other side. So feel free to do that. Then draw those knees back in, feet are parallel. Arms out from the shoulders. The exhale takes the knees over to the left. Add a prop under that bottom thigh as needed. Left hand to the top thigh to deepen the twist. Sink the right shoulder down and turn the head the opposite direction to counter twist the neck. And then surrender the weight of the body to the ground. Let gravity help traction the whole body out. Take some slow, deep breaths here. And one more complete round of breath on this side. So again, that includes a full inhale 
and exhale. The next inhalation, we'll roll the head in the nose, knees back to center. Again, if you need to readjust the low back, do so. So just one more pose here before we move into final relaxation. So this is gonna be another great pose to do every day. So doing little rotations, even when you're sitting at home or at work, just to keep our digestive system more active as it slows down through fasting. This is called the bottom of Kassana, so it's great to massage the ascending and descending colon. So relax the shoulders down, hug your right knee in, interweave the fingers, placing your hands on your shin bone. If that's a little much for the knee, simply hold behind the knee, no big deal. Now stretch your left leg flat to the floor. So the left leg is all the way down to the ground. So use the strength of the hands and the arms. Take a deep breath in, try to inflate the belly again. Now as you exhale, gently pull the right knee more towards the armpit and the shoulder. So you're not pulling it directly into the chest. It's more close to the armpit, the shoulder, and we should definitely feel some compression in the right side of our belly. As you breathe in, back off of that a little bit. Try to inflate the abdomen. And then exhale, gently draw the knee towards the armpit. Havana Mukhasana, wind relieving pose. One more round. So as you inhale, you can make the belly nice and big. And then exhale, gentle compression, pulling the right knee in. And then release the foot to the floor. Inhale, stretch your right leg out so both legs are flat to the floor. And reach your arms overhead. You should feel the abdomen stretch here. Big stretch. Exhale, float your arms down. Pull your left knee in and hug your fingers across the left shin bone or behind the knee. Shoulders are down, head is flat to the floor. Your right leg is flat to the floor. Inhale, inflate the belly. Exhale, gently. Pull the left knee towards the left armpit. You should feel that compression in the belly and even across the hip crease. Inhale, back off on that pull. Try to inflate the abdomen. Exhale, gently pull. One more round. Inhale, expand the belly back off. Exhale, pull it in as much as is comfortable for you. And then next inhale, drop the foot to the floor, slide that leg out, reach the arms overhead, big stretch, let the belly expand. Exhale, arms down, walk the feet in. One more time, hug the knees in. So this is full of Anamukhasan. We'll see how far we get tonight. We'll try to reach our arms across the shin bones. If you're able to take a hold of opposite elbows, great. If not, maybe try to grab forearms, wrists, fingertips, or even just both shin bones, no problem. And then we'll breathe in, let the belly expand. And as you exhale, you'll try to draw those knees in. If you'd like to stretch the upper back as well, feel free to draw the nose up to the knees. But as you inhale, back off, relax the head down. Exhale, gentle pulling, hugging the body. Again, just one more round. Inhale. And then exhale, give it a little squeeze. Give your body a squeeze. Appreciate your body and yourself for being here tonight. And then we're gonna relax the head down and the feet down. Okay, so it's time to set ourselves up for final relaxation. You are more than welcome at this point to just let the arms flop open beside the body and open those feet out and stretch the legs out. I would recommend if you have pillows, I'm gonna roll off to my side here and gather up the pillows that I grabbed off my couch. And I'm gonna place them to the bottom of my mat here. 
If you grabbed a washcloth or a little scarf, have that for your eyes. And if you're able to find a book or a heavier little object, we'll grab that at this point too. So whether you're lying just flat on the floor or you're adding some support, when you come back down, I'm just gonna swing my lower legs back up on top of those pillows. And it can be a really nice relief for the low back. I'm just gonna let my feet hang off the other side. And you'll notice that my hips are a little bit more open. So I don't have a 90 degree bend at my knees or at my hips. So my hips still get a chance to open, but they're slightly elevated. Feel free to add a little extra cushion behind the head. Adjust your surroundings. If you're utilizing a prop for our belly breathing that we're gonna practice, you'll place it right on top of your belly button on the lower belly and balance it there. At this point, you can take an eye covering if you grabbed one and place it on top of the eyes to help them relax. If we don't have a block or a prop on our belly, place the hands on the belly. That will work just fine. So take a moment here, find the very back center of the skull, rock the head to release the neck. Poof those cheeks back up with air. Swallow a couple times, relaxing the mouth, tongue and jaw. Close the eyes and let the eyes sink into the sockets. Let go of any expression across the face. Unfurl the brow. Relax the eyebrow center. With the lips softly touching, relax the tongue and lower jaw to gravity. Feel the weight of the shoulders, the elbows, the arms. Relaxing all the way down into the hands and the fingertips. Relax the back of the body, the back of the heart. Let the low back sink into the ground. Relax the larger muscles around the hips, the buttocks and the thighs. Feel the weight of the legs as we relax all the way down to the knees, into the ankles, the feet and the toes. Relax the belly. And we'll concentrate for a moment here on the belly. And we'll notice the rise and fall of the belly with each breath. So on our inhale, one more time, we'll let that belly expand. And if you have a book or prop on your belly, purposely try to lift it up towards the ceiling. And then on the exhale, you'll let the belly drop back down into the body. And that gentle weight of your book and prop will help bring the belly back down to the ground. On our inhale, belly expands. We try to lift our prop up to the ceiling. And on the exhale, we let the belly fall back down into the body. Again, move at a comfortable rhythm with your body and breath. Let everything else be very relaxed. The mind focused on the rise and fall of the belly with the breath.
Let's all try to take a few more rounds of our deep yogic breathing. Next time you get to an exhale, we'll let go of the belly breathing. We'll let the breath wander away wherever it wants to. If you wanna remove a prop that you placed on your belly, do so at this time. And again, the hands can just rest off to the sides of the body. Notice a very gentle breath around the tip of the nose and the nostrils. And we'll continue to relax here for a couple more moments. If the mind wanders, just bring the mind back to that gentle breath around the tip of the nose and the nostrils. As we take just one more moment of today to let go, to feel a sense of surrender, and to simply be and breathe. And then we'll slowly start to come back to the breath of the body. And we'll start to breathe life back into our body. So gently wake up the toes, give them a little wiggle. Wake up the fingertips. Rock the head side to side, roll wrists and ankles. Let's take another deep breath in and re-extend our arms overhead. Spread the fingers nice and wide. You can extend up through the feet if they're elevated. Just stretch your feet out, spread the toes. Give your right side a little bit more of a stretch. Give that left side a little bit more of a stretch. And then one more big breath in. Stretch the whole body nice and long, filling up our body. On the exhale, we'll float our arms down and walk our feet in. And then hug those knees in to rock out the back. From here, bring the right arm beside the head. We'll roll all the way onto our right side in a fetal position, supta balasana. Cradle the head on the biceps. 
and let the left hand fall to the floor in front of the heart, pausing for a moment. And then we'll try to keep the eyes closed or soft, press into the ground, and we're gonna push our bodies back up. We will revisit any comfortable seated pose here, and we'll take just a couple more breaths together to finish our practice tonight. So find those sit bones, sit up nice and tall. We'll be mindful of our surroundings here. So one more time, float your fingertips off to the side of the body and then turn the palms up to the ceiling. Inhale, reach those arms all the way up to the ceiling. And let's gather up everything we need for the rest of our night. Turn those palms out, big breath out. Exhale the fingertips back down to the ground and let go of all that other junk we don't need tonight. And one more time, inhale, arms up. This time, bring those palms to touch. Exhale the hands to heart center and humbly bow the head down to the heart to honor and thank ourselves our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful and thankful that we were all able to make time for ourselves and our well being this evening. Om Shanti 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 He. Om Peace, Peace, Peace. And I thank you all so much. Huge thank you to Muslim Space for making this happen once again. It's such a uh, joy to be invited back. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you do have questions or comments for me, feel free to um, share. You can always use our chat box for that. If you have any questions for Shavana, and we'll be back here the next three Mondays, same time, same place. So thank you so much, Joanne. That was beautiful. I really appreciate oh, it. You are so welcome. I'm so happy to be here to share with you. It feels so good. We all need some time to just breathe and relax. And you yes. did so great. It was so wonderful. Our little one here tonight. I love having kids in class. <laughs> They remind us also to just let things go and <laughs> thank you so much, Joanne. That was so I could just take a nap right now. <laughs> oh, so, <yeah>. Right. <laughs> Good. Well, I hope you all appreciated it. And if you have suggestions too, feel free to share those things. You know, we're always open to things that you might want to do more of. So and please share with your friends and your family. And yeah, and if um, you're interested in more Muslim space programming for Ramadan, please go to our website, muslimspace.org, and you have a whole page of Ramadan events. And we're so happy for this partnership with Austin Yoga Tree and Joanne. She's always, you know, we've been bringing her back. This is our third year because she does such a great job for us. So thank you so much. I know we've been through a lot together over the last couple of years. <laughs> so... All right, you guys, um, have a wonderful evening. Take care, rest up. Kaz, so glad to see you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow at work. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Right, bye, everybody. Shabana, just reach out to me if you have any questions or comments, okay? I and I'll go that. ahead and, and end everything for you. Thank you. Bye.